This briefing provides information about an officer-involved shooting that occurred in the Manhattanville neighborhood of Manhattan in the confines of the 26th Precinct on May 20th, 2020. You will see relevant video footage and hear audio recordings and radio transmissions that will allow you to gain a better understanding of the events that led up to the incident and what occurred during the incident based on the facts we know at this time. New York State law and NYPD policy give police officers the authority to use force under appropriate circumstances when necessary. The department's Force Investigation Division conducts a thorough investigation when an officer discharges his or her firearm or in cases of serious injury or death. Sometimes these investigations can take up to a year or longer to complete. Our understanding of the incident may change as additional evidence is collected, analyzed, and reviewed. Investigators are typically required to interview multiple witnesses several times, review many hours of video footage, and analyze a significant amount of forensic evidence. In this specific investigation, follow-up interviews are still being conducted and video evidence is still under review. We do not draw any conclusions about whether an officer's actions were consistent with department policy and the law until all the facts are known. The images and information you are about to see may be disturbing. When a police officer uses force to arrest a suspect or defend against an attack, it can be graphic and sometimes difficult to watch. There may also be strong language used in the videos you are about to see. Viewer discretion is advised, especially for young children and sensitive viewers. This officer-involved shooting occurred inside of an apartment at 1 St. Nicholas Terrace in Manhattan on May 20th, 2020. During the incident, Sergeant Kerwin Klein, assigned to anti-crime duty in the 26th Precinct, attired in civilian clothes, discharged two rounds from his service firearm during a confrontation with a subject later identified as Ubaldo Gomez, a 44-year-old male, who was attempting to stab a male with a chef's knife. Prior to the arrival of the police, Mr. Gomez fatally shot his sister-in-law and then stabbed the male in the abdomen. During the incident, Mr. Gomez was initially armed with a Glock Model 19 9mm firearm and later an 8-inch chef's knife, both of which were recovered at the scene. The incident began at approximately 6.47 p.m. when the female homicide victim, along with her sister, who is the subject's wife, attempted to leave an apartment inside of 1 St. Nicholas Terrace. As the female homicide victim opened the door to leave, Ubaldo Gomez entered the apartment with the Glock 9mm firearm in his right hand and shot her in the head. CCTV video captures Mr. Gomez's movements as he enters the apartment. The female homicide victim fell to the floor inside the front door of the apartment. The male stabbing victim, who was also present in the apartment, charged Mr. Gomez and wrapped his arms around Mr. Gomez's torso, which caused Mr. Gomez to drop his firearm. A physical struggle ensued between the male stabbing victim and Mr. Gomez, and both men fell to the floor. Mr. Gomez's wife kicked the firearm away from Mr. Gomez, picked it up, hid it in a recliner, and then fled the apartment as the physical struggle between the male stabbing victim and Mr. Gomez continued. At some point during their struggle, Ubaldo Gomez took a chef's knife with an 8-inch blade from the kitchen sink and stabbed the male victim in the abdomen. The male stabbing victim and Mr. Gomez continued to struggle over the knife. There were multiple 911 calls reporting the incident. New York City, 911. Do you need police fire medical? Please, please. Uh, for St. Nicholas Avenue? St. Nicholas? Yes, please. St. Nicholas in what, ma'am? Eh? St. Nicholas Avenue in what? In St. Nicholas Avenue, please. St. Nicholas in what, ma'am? Uh, 127. 127. St. Nicholas in 127? Yeah, 127. Are you inside or outside? Uh? Is it inside or outside? Outside, inside, inside. Apartment 51. Wait, ma'am, you gotta give me the building number, please. <laughs> building number? Uh, one for San Nicolas. One for? 
One St. Nicholas Terrace. One St. Nicholas Terrace. Okay, yes. what's going on there, sir? I, I'm not sure. Oh, sir, do you speak Spanish? Uh, tell her, um, somebody, what about it? Un momento, un momento, por favor, okay? Somebody killed my sister. Somebody Please. killed your sister? Please. Ma'am, 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 take a deep breath and listen to me. I'm going to get somebody who can speak Spanish, okay? As a result, NYPD units were dispatched to a shots fired, person shot call. 34 shots fired, one St. Nicholas Terrace. Receiving a 34 shot fired, 1 St. Nicholas Terrace. 2 6 Charlie. Prime Sergeant. Prime Sergeant. Tell me wrong now, man. 10 4. 6 Charlie, you read? Yeah, show me what we're for. 10 4. 1850. It's going to be apartment 51. Uh, it's one call in regards at the moment. See my call say someone shot at the location. Nothing further. At 6.50 p.m., Sergeant Klein, along with other plainclothes and uniformed officers, arrived outside the location. Sergeant Klein and the other officers ascended the stairwell as civilians directed them toward the fifth floor. Upon arriving on the fifth floor, Sergeant Klein approached the door to the apartment, which was open, with his service firearm drawn. Sergeant Klein gave verbal commands to the occupants of the apartment to show their hands and transmitted a request for the emergency service unit over his radio. The other officers announced their presence as the police and NYPD. Sergeant Klein crossed the threshold of the apartment door as he continued to give verbal commands, such as, stop moving and show me your hands. Sergeant Klein's body-worn camera captured the physical struggle on the floor between Mr. Gomez and the male stabbing victim. Mr. Gomez, who was to the right of the male stabbing victim, had the chef's knife in his right hand. Mr. Gomez raised his right hand over his head and moved the knife downward in what appeared to be an attempt to stab the male victim again. Sergeant Klein then discharged two rounds from his Glock 19 service firearm at Mr. Gomez striking him twice. As a result of being struck by the bullets, Mr. Gomez dropped the knife. Sergeant Klein approached Mr. Gomez and kicked the knife away from him. Mr. Gomez was handcuffed, at which point other responding officers searched the apartment, determining that there were no other victims or subjects. Sergeant Klein was equipped with a body-worn camera that captured the incident. The following is footage from that camera. Man. 
six crime sergeant, roll the issue now. No. Six crime sergeant, roll, I, possible barricaded suspect inside. I got a female down, roll the issue now. Man, just show me your hands, please. Show me your hands, police. NYPD. What do you see? Nothing. It's a suspect inside. I can't see him. Just show me your hands, man, so I can come inside and give you some help. Come out slow. He's on the ground. He's on the ground. He's crawling into the other room. He's crawling into the other room. Be careful. Be careful. Come over here. Stop moving! Right. Show me your hands! Show me your hands! 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 Hands out! Stop! We're good, we're good, we're good! This is the subject's firearm recovered at the scene. This is the subject's knife recovered at the scene. After the discharge, the officers called for medical assistance for the injured subject who suffered two gunshot wounds to the back and shoulder, and for the female homicide victim who suffered an apparent gunshot wound to the head. Both Ubaldo Gomez and the female homicide victim were pronounced deceased at the scene by EMS. The male stabbing victim was transported to St. Luke's Hospital where he was admitted and treated for the stab wound to his abdomen. In the coming weeks and months, the NYPD Force Investigation Division, along with the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, will continue to investigate and analyze this incident as more interviews are conducted and forensic tests are completed. After the investigation is complete, the facts of the case will be presented to the First Deputy Commissioner's Use of Force Review Board, where the evidence will be evaluated to determine if the use of force applied in this case was justified and within department guidelines.